Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he, speaking of the beast, causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Notice, John is very clear about certain things, but he's not so clear about other things. He's clear that the beast will cause all people to receive a mark. He's not so clear where the mark will be. He said either on the right hand or on the forehead. He's clear that nobody would be able to buy or sell. You wouldn't be able to do business unless you had the mark of the beast, a.k.a. the mark of the devil. That's clear. Exactly what this mark is, is not so clear because John said it's either a mark or it's a name or it's a number. Now, I'm pretty sure that most of you have heard that the mark of the beast is a microchip that they will insert in your right hand so that when you go to the store, you can, you can buy and you can, or you can sell with this microchip, RFID. Theoretically, that's possible because now we have the technology to do that, but practically, it's not so possible because many people still believe in the Bible and many people know about what the Bible says about the mark of the beast. So if there really was a world ruler that would step up and say, everybody needs to get this chip in the right hand, a lot of people would say no. As long as the Bible is around, a lot of people would say no. But I'm here to tell you that we should just kind of reassess this, okay? There are a lot of theories about a lot of things when it comes to end time prophecy, and this is one of them. We need to have the ability to step back and to reassess and to say, is it really feasible that this might happen? Is it really possible that this might happen? Or is it something else? The scriptures tell us of two different kind of marks that you can receive in your forehead. Number one is the mark of God. Ezekiel chapter 9 gives us a little bit more detail into the mark of God. Not the mark of the beast, but the mark of God. It says that God will give a commandment to an angel to go to find everybody who is vexed, who sigh, who are per, you know, people who are perplexed over the abominations in the land. Well, you see, in the scriptures, certain sins are classified as abominations. So this angel in Ezekiel chapter 9 is to go out and to find people who are vexed, perplexed, who cry and moan and sigh over the abominations, the abominable sins that are being committed upon the earth. These people who are vexed over these abominations will get the mark of God in the forehead. Now, the scriptures tell us that angels are invisible. For the most part, they are invisible. In 2 Kings chapter 6, it tells us of a story of Elisha with his servant, and the king of Syria is making war against Israel, and he sends a great army to surround them. And, you know, the servant of Elisha is like, well, we're doomed, we're, we're done. Look at the army is surrounding us, and it's a great army. There's way more of them. <laughs> There's like way more of them than there is of us. And Elisha says, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And his eyes were open, and he saw a great army of angels. Those angels were there all along, but he didn't see them. Like, who knows how many angels there were? Millions of angels. They were there, invisible. Look at the story of Balaam as well. When the angel stopped him, he didn't see that angel until God opened his eyes. So angels, for the most part, are invisible. That implies that the mark that these angels put on the foreheads of those who are vexed over these abominations is also invisible. An invisible mark only seen in the spiritual realm. If we got on one side the mark of God and we got on the other side the mark of the devil and we know the mark of God is invisible put on by invisible entities, i.e. angels, it should be safe to say that the mark of the beast, the mark of the devil, is also an invisible mark put on by an angel. Probably a fallen angel at that. So if the mark of God is invisible, 
put on by invisible entities. The mark of the devil could also be invisible, put on by invisible entities. Now that makes sense, total sense, in the face of cancel culture. Because if you do not accept certain abominations, if you do not accept or even promote certain abominations, you will be canceled. You will lose your business. You will not be able to buy or sell. Now, the mark of the beast could be a microchip. I'm not saying it's not. But I am saying that it's much more feasible much more reasonable and much more practical to say that it's exactly what the mark of God is. It's just in the opposite direction. It is an invisible mark put on by an invisible entity, put on those who accept or even promote the abominations, who follow the narrative of the mob. And if you don't have that mark, then you have the mark of God on your forehead. And if you have the mark of God on your forehead, it's going to be very, very hard to buy or sell, to do business. And we see that happening today. We see that happening right now. If you accept the abominations, if you promote the abominations, you're good to go. Right now, as I record this, the world is being overtaken by this tyrannical mob who is pushing abominations upon people. Those who do not accept those abominations, those who are vexed, those who are perplexed, those who cry and moan and sigh over those abominations will get the mark of God. Those who accept and even promote those abominations, good to go. You're okay. You won't be deplatformed. You won't be depersoned. I've been saying this for months, probably a couple years now, that cancel culture very well could be the beginning of the mark of the beast. I've never heard anybody else say that until last night. I heard an interview between Glenn Beck from The Blaze and Mr. Torba from Gab. Listen to this. There are a few other people uh, that are already paying a very high price that you need to know about. Andrew Torba is the founder of Gab. Um, Gab, he's a Christian, uh, and he wanted just to defend free speech, and he saw the rise of censorship, and so he started Gab, and it has a community of 4.5 million people from around the world using various alternate uh, technology products, such as Gab Social, uh, the Dissenter web browser, and people-powered news aggregator Gab Trends. Well, he's run into some problems with that. He has not only been um, uh, shut down and squashed, he is being depersoned. Andrew is here to talk about what is happening and who's doing it to him. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Hi, Glenn. I appreciate you having me on. Sure. So now you were banned by both Apple and Google, right? Uh, and and why was that? <laughs> well, they claim that we uh, have hate speech on our website, which, of course, as we both know, is not a legally defined term in the United States of America. The Supreme Court has unanimously ruled uh, that that is 100% uh, uh, protected by First Amendment on multiple occasions. Um, so I, I'm not sure what they mean by that, but it, it's not only App Source Clan, it's also hosting providers, it's payment processors, it's a uh, you know, basic level of infrastructure required to, to run websites such as email services. All in all, we've been banned from about 25 or so different services and platforms. And it's not only the business, Glenn, it's, it's also me personally. So I've been banned from things like Coinbase and things like PayPal. And um, now even Visa is, is totally blacklisting us. It's, it's mafia style tactics wait, 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 wait. against us. Wait, so it's not just Gab. Now they are making it impossible for you to do a transaction using any financial service. Right. Primarily uh, using services like PayPal or using services like Coinbase. I mean, you know, a lot of these different services have basically you know, a monopoly on transacting on the Internet. So, you know, 100 percent of our business right now is being operated by check by mail. People are actually writing out physical checks and mailing them to a P.O. box uh, or Bitcoin. Right. So that's what we're relying on right now for our customers, because we, we cannot process payments on the Internet. 
So this is the kind of stuff, you're a Christian, uh, this is the kind of stuff, if you don't accept the mark of the beast, you're not going to be able to uh, do any business. You're not going to be able to have, you know, uh, make any transactions. You're kind of already yeah. starting down this road. Yes, and that's why I, you know, wrote a, a very long editorial about this, and I'm glad that you and others are talking about this, is because I want other Christians to be aware of this. You know, it's we're not too far away, Glenn, from seeing the Bible labeled as hate speech. And if you're a, you know, Christian website or if you're a church and you want to transact on the Internet, um, I don't think we're too far off from, you know, seeing exactly what is happening to me happen to all Christians on the Internet. So that's why I'm speaking up about it. I mean, you bring up, you know, Revelation 13, 17, uh, you know, any man that doesn't have the mark of the beast, uh, you know, isn't allowed to transact, not allowed to buy or sell. And that's exactly what is happening to me right now. And I, I do believe that it's largely because I am very outspoken about my faith in Christ. Um, and you don't see too many, you know, uh, technology CEOs that are, are very candid and very open about that. But I'm, I'm very proud of that. And uh, it's not something that I'm going to hide. Mr. Torba references Revelation chapter 13, verse 17, the mark of the beast. And he says, that is exactly what is happening to me right now. It's an amazing time we are living in. We are seeing things play out before our eyes that we never thought possible. Stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Seek him while he may be found and you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.